Hello and welcome to Bread of Life. Our speaker for this week is Pastor Greg Hendrickson of New Haven. Ezra chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. In the first year of Cyrus, king of Persia, the Lord moved the heart of Cyrus to make a proclamation throughout his realm. The Lord, the God of heaven, has given me all the kingdoms of the earth and has appointed me to build a temple for him at Jerusalem in Judah. Any of his people among you may go up to Jerusalem and build the temple of the Lord, the God who is in Jerusalem. The book of Ezra tells the story of the children of Israel returning home from exile in Babylon, rebuilding the temple, rebuilding their community, rebuilding their lives. The book was written to remind the people that despite their past failures, despite their present struggles, and despite their future uncertainties, they could still count on God. The same God who had once brought their ancestors out of slavery in Egypt had now brought them back from exile in Babylon. We'll see three parallels in Ezra 1 and 2 between what God did to bring the children of Israel out of Egypt and what God did to bring the children of Israel back from Babylon. The first parallel is that God worked through a pagan king to deliver his holy people. In the book of Exodus, Pharaoh was the arch enemy of the Israelites. He was dead set against them. He brutally oppressed them, tried to kill them. However, he also became the unwitting instrument of God's sovereign purposes. In Exodus 9:16, God said to Pharaoh, For this purpose I have raised you up to show you my power, that my name may be proclaimed in all the earth. God gave Pharaoh over to his own stubborn desires and plans, so that ultimately everyone might see that God and not Pharaoh was really in charge. In Exodus, God worked through a hostile pagan king to deliver his holy people. And in Ezra, God worked in the heart of another pagan king, Cyrus. Cyrus also was not a believer in the biblical God. He was primarily loyal to the Babylonian god Marduk, but he was friendly toward the Israelites. He gave them permission to return to their home territory and to rebuild their temple in Jerusalem. Cyrus did the same for several other people groups who had previously been conquered and deported from their homelands. So in Exodus, God worked through a hostile pagan king. In Ezra, God worked through a friendly pagan king. But in both cases, God worked for the good of his people. And today, as Christians, we can be assured that God is still sovereign over pagan political leaders and he can work through them for his people's good. Now, as Christians, we do have responsibilities toward our political leaders. Romans 13 says we should respect those in authority and honor the law of the land, unless it conflicts with the law of God. 1 Timothy 2 urges us to pray for those in authority, whoever they may be, and whether or not we agree with them. Isaiah chapter 1 tells us to seek justice and correct oppression. But the book of Proverbs also reminds us the king's heart is a stream of water in the hand of the Lord, and he turns it wherever he will. So no matter who is in power on earth, God is still on the throne in heaven. And so we do not worship any elected official. We do not set our ultimate hope on any political candidate, for only Jesus reigns over the nations in righteousness. No other human being comes close to his majesty, his mercy, his justice, and his faithfulness. So when the world is uncertain and shaky, we can stand firm in Jesus. When the world is hostile and dark, we can persevere in hope through Jesus. When it seems like things are going well, we can be humble and grateful. For God is still sovereign, even over pagan political leaders and he can even work through them for his people's good. You've been listening to Pastor Greg Hendrickson of New Haven, and this has been Bread of Life, a program to encourage you from God's Word.